So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and to the new series of online video tutorials. This time, I'm going to discuss bipolar junction transistor. I utilize PowerPoint and word writing so that we'll be able to understand more the BJT's operation, theory, and problem solving. So keep watching. So hello and welcome to the new video series about transistor. Now, itong video series na ito about transistor ay medyo madami-dami din. So, tsagayin po nating tapusin. Okay? So, let us study the new electronic device transistor. So, we are already done with the first electronic device, the simplest, that is the diode. And moving on, let's study the transistors. So, transistor was developed or invented in December 23, 1947 by John Bardeen, William Shackley, and Walter Bertain. These three inventors of transistor have been awarded Nobel Prize for Physics para sa invention nila ng transistor. A bit, as a basic definition, a transistor is an electronic device composed of layers of semiconductor material which regulates current or voltage flow and act as a switch or a gate for electronic circuit. So, di ba, dinefine ang diode as an electronic switch. Okay? A transistor could also be defined as an electronic switch. So, aside from diode, transistors, um, thyristors, and many more electronic devices are being used as electronic switch. So, another definition of transistor is that basically a resistor that amplifies electrical impulses as they are transferred from its input to its output. So, basically, ito lang daw ay isang resistor na may kakayahang mag-amplify ng electrical signal. So, yung electrical signal na yun ay natransfer natin mula sa input papunta sa kanyang output terminals. Okay? At tingnan nyo yung dalawang naka-highlight na word, transfer and resistor. Yan po kasi yung pinanggalingan ng word na transistor. If I'm going to combine that two, mabubuo ko ang word na transistor. Okay? So, bakit ba transistor yung ginagamit natin? Pwede bang ibang bagay pa? Pwede naman po kasi noong hindi pa nai-invent ang transistor, ang ginagamit ng mga tao nun is vacuum tubes. Ito po yung nakikita nyo sa left part ng ating presentation. Ngayon, itong mga vacuum tubes na to, kung hindi nyo pa napapakinggan, it requires large power and masyadong malalaki. Hindi katulad ng, ng semiconductor devices or electronic devices na maliliit at compact tulad nito. Ang transistor din ay nagre-require lang ng small power and small voltage para gumana. And yung nagagawa ng ganitong kaliliit na device ay kaparehas lang nito. So, mas naging efficient ang mga naging inventions and other applications ng mga circuits. Now, look at this picture. Would you believe me if I tell you that this whole room is just a one computer? Yes, that is just one computer. That is the ENIAC. Okay? Kaya po ganyang kalaki yung computer na yan is because ang ginagamit nila noon ay mga vacuum tubes. Okay? Hindi lang po isa, dalawa, kundi thousands of vacuum tubes para lang mapagana ang computer na yan. Then, later on, na-develop si transistor. And so, yung mga computer, lumiit ng lumiit. Mas numinipis. Dahil na din po yun sa technology na tinatawag nating integrated circuit. Okay, yung integrated circuit, itong isang itong nakikita nyo ay isang transistor lang po ang laman. Samantalang itong nakikita nyo, this is an integrated circuit, ang laman po niyan ay thousands to millions of transistors. Sobrang liit lang po niyan. Okay? Yan yung microprocessor. Yan yung mahal na binabayadan nyo kapag bumibili kayo ng computer. Yan yung Intel i3, i5, i7, i9. Kaya yung computer na may mas mataas na specs or specification ng 
microprocessor tulad niyan ay mas mahal kumpara sa mas mababa ang specification. Yun po kasi is due to the fact na mas madaming laman ang i7 na Intel Core processor kaysa sa i3 na Intel Core processor. Okay? So just imagine na kung naabutan nyo pa yung matatabang computer nun, we're able na panipisin yun sa panahon ngayon. Same thing with our television. Kung sobrang tataba ng TV dati, ngayon, mapapayat na. Meron pang ang iba na foldable na pwede mong i-bend. Okay, moving on. Let's move to, uh, let's tackle the types of transistors. There are two major classification of transistors. We have the bipolar junction transistor or yung tinatawag nating BJT. And the other one is yung tinatawag nating FET or FET. Ito yung tinatawag nating field effect transistor. And field effect transistor is subdivided into two more classification. It could be a JFET or a MOSFET. A JFET stands for junction field effect transistor. And a MOSFET stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So, what's the main difference between a BJT and FET? So, a BJT is a bipolar device, while an FET is an unipolar device. At the same time, BJT is current controlled, while FET is voltage controlled. Later on, sa operation ng BJT, makikita nyo kung paano kinontrol ng current ang operation ng ating device na BJT. Later on also, you will know the difference about bipolar and unipolar. Okay? So, let's move forward to the first type of transistor. This is the bipolar junction transistor. So, a bipolar junction transistor is composed of three layers as depicted in this picture, layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. Those three layers could be made up of two N-type material and one P-type or two P-type and one N-type sandwich in the middle. Okay? These two are the schematic symbol for transistor which later on discuss natin. So, bakit ba bipolar junction transistor ang pangalan ng BJT? First thing first is the term bipolar. Okay, from the previous part of the video, BJT is treated as bipolar device while FET is a unipolar device. When you say polar, siguro ang nasa isip nyo ay polarities, parang battery. Well, yes, some sort of, pero hindi po ganun. Bipolar po, kasi ang ibig sabihin ng bipolar device, ito yung mga device na gumagamit ng holes at electrons, magkasabay na ginagamit, opo, both holes and electrons to produce current. Kapag naman sinabi nating unipolar, ang ginagamit niyan ay hole lamang or electrons lamang para makapag-produce ng current. Tsaka tingnan nyo, bipolar, it means two. So, two charge carriers, the holes and electrons. Unipolar, so one charge carrier. Kapag ginamit na si holes, si holes na lang. Kapag ginamit na si electrons, si electrons na lang. Kaya bipolar, parehas na ginagamit si holes and si electrons para magkaroon tayo ng current. Okay? I hope that's clear to you. Next thing, bipolar junction transistor. We already defined why bipolar. This time, let us define why junction. Okay? Junction is due to the fact na sa construction natin. Okay? So, a diode is formed by two semiconductor layers. You have the P-type and the N-type and you have here one layer. ba layer ito? Yan. Okay? Si transistor kasi, specifically si BJT, ay binubuo ng tatlong layer. So, magdagdag pa ako ng isang N-type material. So, as you can see, P-type material is sandwich between the two N-type materials. Now, dahil may dinagdag akong isang layer, di ba, isang diode to, 
nagkaroon pa ako ulit ng pangalawang diode. So, may isa ulit akong junction. So, pangalan natin yan ng junction 1 and junction 2. So, at the same time, kung si diode, si p-type ay pinapangalan na nating anode at si n-type ay pinapangalan na nating cathode, kay BJT, papangalan na natin itong mga layers na to or regions ng emitter, base, and collector. Notice also yung sizes nila and yung color gradient nila. Sa sizes, pinakamalaki ang collector, pinakamaliit sa base. Sa color gradient, pinakadark si emitter, pinakalight si base. Later on, explain ko kung bakit. Okay? So, we have here the first junction. Since it is in the middle of the base and the emitter region, that is called the base emitter junction. Next thing is the junction 2. Since it is in the middle of the base region and the collector region, it is called base collector junction. Pwede din naman pong emitter base collector base. Okay? So, let's move forward to the three types of, uh, to the three regions of BJT. The base, the emitter, and the collector. So, the base, as depicted in the picture, it is the thinnest of all the layers. At the same time, it is only lightly doped. Lightly doped, ibig sabihin po, yung current mula sa kanya ay kakaunti laan. Kakaunti kasi yung charge carriers mo doon. Okay? Base is also the region to which carriers flow from emitter to collector. So, yung mga car yung current natin, hindi po pwedeng tumalon papunta doon. Dinadaanan po siya. Okay? Next layer, we have the emitter layer region, we have the emitter region. So, emitter region, as clearly depicted in this picture, it is the darker sa color gradient natin. Pinaka-dark siya kasi heavily doped po siya. Dahil siya ay heavily doped at from the name itself, emitter, siya po ang nag -e emit ng ating mga charges. Sa kanya po nang gagaling. Okay? Si collector naman guys, again, as depicted in the picture, it is the largest. Okay? So, with regards to its color gradient, less dark siya kay emitter, pero darker siya kay base kasi siya ay moderately doped lang po. Largest region siya kasi, from the name itself, collector po siya ng ibabato ni base at ni emitter. Okay? Moving on to the types of bipolar junction transistor. We have two types of bipolar junction transistor. You have the NPN and the PNP. So, NPN po, kasi binuo natin yan gamit ang dalawang N-type at isang P-type. At PNP, dahil binuo natin siya gamit ang dalawang P-type at isang N-type. This is the schematic symbol of NPN and this is the schematic symbol of PNP. Paano po madaling matandaan kung alin ang NPN at PNP? Tumingin lang po tayo sa arrow. NPN po, kasi ang ibig sabihin yan ay napasok na. Kung napasok na, palabas na po yung arrow natin. It makes sense, di ba? PNP, ibig sabihin naman po niyan ay pasok na pasok. Kaya kita nyo yung arrow naka papasok. Okay? At the same time, the middle one is the base region. The upper one is the collector region. At kung alin po yung may arrow, yun po ang emitter. Yung arrow po na iyon ay siyang nagdidictate ng direction ng current natin. Okay? PNP Papasok po yung arrow. So, kung alin nga yung may arrow, yun po ang emitter. Yung gitna mo, yun po yung base natin. At yung isa, yun po yung collector natin. Okay, guys? I hope that's clear to you, the two types of BJT. So, 
let's look on the construction of an NPN BJT. So an NPN BJT is formed when you join two N type and in the middle there's the P type. Okay po. So dahil dalawa yung N type material mo, ang majority carriers mo ay electrons dahil ang N type material, ang majority carriers po ay electrons. Ang NPN material din dahil iisa yung P type niya, kaya ang minority carriers mo ay holes. It makes sense naman po, di ba? Oh. Then, let's have an analogy for an NPN. Kung titingnan nyo ang NPN, para siyang dalawang diode. Paanong naging dalawang diode to? Una, tingnan nyo to, P tsaka N. Isang diode po yan. P, anode, N, cathode. Kapag tinignan mo naman yung taas, P, N, isang diode pa din po na nakatalikod lang dito. Okay? As you can see, yung connection sa base, common lang. Okay? So, yung taas, that's your collector. The middle one is the base. This one is the emitter. As you can see, common po yung cathode nila. Okay? Kasi, yan o, connected lang. Okay? And so, kung i-redraw ko pala yung schematic symbol, pwede palang maging ganito. Okay? Pero kung ang nasa isip nyo ay kaya ko palang gumawa ng BJT gamit ang dalawang diode. Very wrong po. Ito po ay representation lang. Hindi po ito isang schematic symbol. Yung ganito pong representation ng transistor ay magagamit mo lang sa pag um, sa pag troubleshoot kung ang BJT ay pag, pag troubleshoot gamit ang tester. Okay? Kasi alam mo, isang diode pala to. Okay? Let's move forward to the PNP. Okay? Baka nagulat kayo, nasa baba na yung arrow. Wala pong kaso yun. Basta wag yung pagpapalitin ang collector at emitter. Ang palatandaan nga po ng emitter, siya yung may arrow. Okay? So, a PNP is made up of 2P type material and in the middle, there's the N type material. Since we have 2P type materials, the majority carriers are holes and the minority carriers are electrons. Okay. Let's move to its analogy. So, tulad kanina, di ba, PN, isang diode po yan. At isang diode uli. Okay. So, the upper part is the collector, the middle part is the base, and the lower part is the electron. Kung kanina ang NPN ay nag, parang, parang kang may diode na common anode, ito naman meron kang diode na common cathode. Okay? And yan yung pwede mong representation. Again, hindi po ito ang schematic symbol. Ang schematic symbol po ay ito. Yung ganitong representation, saan mo lang magagamit? Magagamit mo lang yan kung magto-troubleshoot ka ng BJT gamit ang iyong mga tester. Specifically, yung ohmmeter mo. So, this summarizes the first part of our video. So, keep watching till the last part. Goodbye, guys. See you.